What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are listening to Earth Mightiest Podcast, episode 199. What? Don't interrupt me. (laughs) What's going on, fellas? It's been so long since we recorded. I know, I haven't. I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in forever. You know what I was kind of thinking about, though? Our numbers are getting to a, a point where something historic is 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 bound to happen. Hopefully, uh, in the allotted time, scheduled mm-hmm. <laughs> time, one ninety nine. It's a big number of Avengers casts, Avenger castings. I guess we should be proud of that, huh? Yeah, I mean. I mean, the fact that we are still doing this show is pretty amazing, to be honest. And, like, uh, I'm, like, on my Twitch stream, and I was like, oh, you have a podcast? And, like, how long have you been doing it? I was like, mm, 2011? <laughs> you have to sit there and do math? I was like, holy shit. I'm, like, is it coming to the point where, sometimes, like, sometimes people say, oh, you have a podcast, and you're not sure if they're, like almost being condescending or if like, or if they're actually interested and then you're not sure if you feel proud of it enough anymore to say yes or no to the question <laughs> i don't actually have that happen i just thought it would be well yeah something I, I that guess, will happen to people right in the future i guess it depends right like you being a straight white dude having a podcast is different than me <laughs> Hey, be saying, <laughs> saying, uh, <laughs> we Wait, are I'm... saying we have podcasts. <laughs> Just saying. Well, am... Actually, I need explanation. Am, am I more allowed or less allowed? No, like you, you <laughs> might have a different uh, outlook or like a different judgment. Oh, right. Like as in, like your uh, your Joe Rogan's your. <laughs> Your oh. Andrew Tate's and like you know your your shitty shitty people. <laughs> yes. So there's someone that doesn't know you, yeah. they're just like, oh, you have a podcast. Cool. You're, you're one of those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's um. Oh, I that that had not that had not occurred to us, dude. <clears throat> uh, but you're not wrong about that, and that's that's pretty. That's kind of a uh, pretty sorry state of affairs for like what podcasting has become (laughs) i refuse to be held responsible for any of that nonsense but um that's too bad (laughs) (laughs) that wasn't the reason why i was just like sort of how long have you been doing that podcast really if people start you know uh drilling down want to know how many followers there are and stuff like that then it starts to get a little bit. Hey, let's talk about something else ish. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah, we we still have tens of fans. Tens, yeah. literally ten. Hey, look, here's the thing. Every so often, a little bit of uh, Venmo money comes comes my way. Mm-hmm. That sounds like that sounds like a, something I can I can get up for. You know. I'll get up at the crack of noon for something like that. Like, I mean, let's be honest, though. We do it for ourselves. We don't really do it for the listeners because we would have probably yeah, stopped the, a long time ago. Yeah. The, the, the big joke or the big truth is this is how to, like, make sure we commit ourselves to reading our books, right? <laughs> get it done. You got to make sure I read that book. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. So uh, we're coming up on 12 years. Right, wow. we're coming up on. I mean, not me, but so uh, yeah, we're we'll be podcasting for almost as long as our how many listeners we have. <laughs> <laughs> Did I come in the f- fifth year? I think I came in the fifth year, but I don't really remember. Has <laughs> it really been that long, Bobby? I think so, because like. Well, 2018 would have been, that's five years, and um, yeah, that's 
I definitely was going longer. Than, I think it's been like since 2017 or 2016. Pretty sure. Okay. I bet that, <clears throat> you know, we could probably talk to one of our like hacker friends and figure out based on the, <laughs> the website that we host and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Looking back and figuring out the first one that <clears throat> I, I appeared on. But yeah. I don't remember what number it was off the top of my head. Anyways, it's been it's been fun and real. Mm-hmm. I'm st- st- sticking to that story. Um, if yeah, whatever, Via, you kind of ruined my night. But <laughs> 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 I'm totally kidding. I don't, that that's you're you're not wrong. But I'm not letting those bastards get me down. Right. So yeah, nobody uh, should. Shoot, how's it going, guys? Yes? Yeah. For real. It's 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 good. I mean we've recorded fairly recently, so nothing as much has happened since the last time, so um. I I have a confession. hmm Remember uh I believe I told you guys a story about Thanksgiving and uh slipping and falling on my on while we were going down to mm-hmm. concussion time. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um the other day I was outside finishing up a little the last minute repairs on my car to go get it inspected. And, uh, this is no, like sometimes people leave objects are this one, one floor, uh, apartment building. And there's like a walkway in front of it with a railing. So sort of a sidewalk goes in front of everybody's apartment. And then your cars are parked right there. And, some people leave a little bit of junk out there and stuff, but it should should have been no big deal. <laughs> I was moving a little bit fast, and I turned from my car to to like run back towards my apartment to grab a tool because it was a little chilly, and I I caught my foot on something and I started feeling. I was like, I'm gonna go down again. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> oh, Lord. And uh, I like because because I was like so concerned of of hitting my head if i went down i sort of sacrificed (laughs) other parts of my body that i might have otherwise like if i had been on grass or something i mean i was on a on a driveway you know what i mean like a parking lot so it was there was no gonna not gonna be any softness to the landing but yeah i fell and i i kind of bubbled my knee pretty pretty bad (laughs) but i didn't hit my head I, uh, I it's like, that. we're going to have to buy you a helmet. <laughs> I can, cons- you know, I considered like, I was like, <clears throat> um, well, it, and not to get, um, too dark, but, uh, there was a, a, a death in my hometown this week too. And, uh, the word is that it was CTE related. Um, kid who went to my high school, I wasn't really. I'm close with him, but some people I knew uh, did know him. So it was like, I don't know, it was a little scary. Yeah, you got to be careful with that stuff. It's just like, yeah, man, it's not, it's not, concussions ain't what they used to be. You used to be able to bang, bang around and it was all good. <laughs> it also comes with age. The younger you are, the easier it is to bounce back. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about that. <clears throat> we old. Mm-hmm. God, definitely a younger woman was like just parking and getting out of her car as this happened. I more or less did it like right in front of her. <laughs> she was, she was like, "Old man, are you okay?" No, she didn't say that. But... <laughs> did you do the um? <laughs> ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the family guy. Ah. You know what? I, I, ah. I. She actually was like. Bobby, are you? Did you hit your head? And I was like, No, I didn't. But you know what, Laura? I'm actually just gonna take a second right here. <laughs> She's like, Okay, I'm glad you didn't hit your head. I'm just gonna step over you. <laughs> yeah. Early, Anyways. early in my twenties, I, I was um doing like building inspections at a warehouse, mm. and uh, so I'm looking up at the roof, like counting beams, and. I wasn't paying attention to what was in front of me because I was looking up, and I walked off a loading dock. 
No shit. <laughs> yeah. Walked off a loading dock and then like I hit the, my ribs on like the oh. edge. Right. Yeah. And it just knocked the wind out of me. I was still standing and a guy like drove up in his fork and was like, Hey man, are you okay? And I was you like, couldn't yeah. even like, I was like, I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> He's like, Are you hurt? And I was like, just my pride. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, yeah man that's intense loading docks right like yeah that, it was a good not, like yeah like at least like a five a foot, six foot yeah drop yes yeah. but, but i was in my 20s so it was fine <laughs> right you you were you were up some dirt on it yeah but had, i was, had a beer yeah and, i can't imagine um, what it'd be like now yeah yeah well i can actually but <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, uh, that sounds, yeah, pretty gnarly. It's kind of crazy that you ended up on your feet, but still with the wind knocked out of you. Yeah. You don't hear that so often. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Corwin, tell us a, uh, a time when, when, when you were uh, embarrassed and, and pride broken like, like, the, like us. <laughs> uh, nothing recent. I really have to think back. Um... Like whatever, I'm 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 graceful as fuck. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I just avoid that shit nowadays. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've had many adventures on my bike as a younger man. Um, skateboarding. Um, were you a for real skateboarder? Nah, I was you know kid starting out, just learning how to do certain things, and after a while, I had to give it up. So getting hurt too much. Probably the most recent would be busting my ass at the pool. Um, running that, around the pool. That'll hurt your pride if you're at yeah. the, the public pool. Yeah, and it's the kind of where you where you actually just have to lay down on the on the floor for a while because it just feels good to be numb. <laughs> yeah, and not get up and just. <laughs> well, not to mention there's there's like a hundred plus people there, and where you of the age where. You maybe had showed up at the pool because maybe even like Miss Linda Lee was gonna be there with her friends and nah, nah, nah nothing like or... that. Yeah, just checking. Yeah. Could have been, <laughs> you know, like could have been one of those like deal breakers for 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 all of high school where forever you're you're like Corwin cracked his head <laughs> at the pool and thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I'm glad that didn't happen to you. Um, as far as avoiding it though, dude, I'll tell you, I, I didn't, I didn't think I was in a situation where I was going to fall at that one, really at either of those times, even though it was raining that, that first time, I just, uh, anyways, moving on. <laughs> no, I ever plans on falling. So I suppose it's sort of a, yeah, a silly thing to explain, isn't it? <laughs> But I uh, well I don't know if you're on like a you know a B, a BMX doing like motocross or whatever <laughs> there could be some expectation if you're if you're snowboarding on a black diamond with moguls there could be some expectation that you're gonna fall but I mean back in the days up north we made our own little ramps out of wood in the street to do our little bikes and yeah. you know tricks and stuff nice that's what's up. <laughs> Uh, All in right. other news, I uh, I finished uh, painting the Spider Geddon expansion, so I am Yay. I am caught up on on minis again till next year when uh, season three starts. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Delivery and how many? There's like what three hundred and something figures in that season. Uh, it's like a hundred. It's like a hundred forty something. I think. Um, no, that's it. Step away. Okay. I'll be right. Back. Sure. In- including a ridiculously large Galactus. Yeah, there's a large Galaxus, there's a Fin Fang Foom, uh, <clears throat> Goliath, Stature. Uh, yeah, there's some big ones, big ones in there. Uh, 139, according to my spreadsheet. Okay. Pushes up glasses. That'll, that'll keep you busy for a while. Yeah. Uh, but, like, that's not going to be till I'm guessing, March at the earliest. No, I think there was a problem with production and something, so maybe fall into May. Yeah. May, June. Yep. But I had to get it out of my system <laughs> to get these 10 done. So I can concentrate on commissions and 
in the, the Kirby stuff. Yeah, that's uh, that's about it for me. All right. Um, All right. Well, we're on a time limit, back. so All right. we are going to get this podcast started. So, Bobby, anything else before we let Tribe One take it away? Real quick. Um, reminded me, Viet, because you said you finished the Spider Geddon um, add-ons for the figures, right? Mm-hmm. I found this weird folder of um, promotional comic book posters that i used to grab all the time and then try to save and there was one that were that just cut, caught my brain when you said it do you guys remember that they did venom verse too <laughs> oh yeah yeah but there's a couple other good ones so we got the first bucky barnes winter oh. soldier mini we got original sin annual number one i think be it would love that um edge of venom verse that's right Weapons of Mutant Destruction Alpha. X-Men Apocalypse Wars. Across Extraordinary, Uncanny, and All New X-Men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what was the other good one? Some other uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, some other original Sin spin-offs that were just god awful. <laughs> and, that's that. That's the only. That's the only ones worth mentioning. But <laughs> I, think, I think it was still better than the whole inhumanity stuff because ooh, yeah, that was some yeah. rough rope there. Yeah, and I I was explaining. I was trying to explain Silk to somebody who didn't know Silk. <laughs> that was pretty fun. <laughs> oh, oh, I do have the Uncanny Avengers number one Rick Remender, which. It says up in the corner, no more mutants. So I guess that was like the conclusion of the no more mutant stuff. Yeah. Mm. What, like, it was later. It was much Shouldn't later. have been, but I don't remember. I don't, yeah. Should have been way after. All right. Mm. Funny. <laughs> just uh, sort of put, you know what I mean? Put you back there for some of it. Some of it. I don't remember at all. Should we get this, get this popping? Yeah, let's get it popping. Um, before right. we do, uh, patreon.com slash empcast if you want to support us monetarily. Do it. Do it now. Now appearing in the building, up in every ear hole, from 80 year olds to the children. You're here to hear about the heroes and the villains, and save yourself some dollars, yen, and euros from the zeros to the millions. This is a lot of class packed into one podcast. They probably ought to have laws passed, but it's too late to stop the onslaught. Raw blast of compacted, bombastic, five alarm sass. They're talking AVX, way back to secret invasion. They're talking flying up high in the sky, down to the feet on the pavement. They're reading the pages of every single one of the summer events. So other than Venice, you want to be coming to them when you want the Avengers. They're up inside of your environment with flying iron fists, giant size goliaths, and the tiniest super scientists. Try denying it, but I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest. EMP, literally MP, 3 T N T. Young, new, mighty, and secretly Try and I in it, but I insist There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest EMP, literally MP, 3 T N T. Young, new, mighty, and secretly Try and I in it, but I insist There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest All right, this is Earth's Mightiest Podcast. I am Viet Nguyen, and with me, as always, are Corin Kroll. Greetings. And Bobby Moriarty. Uh, sorry, I got a headache. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Too much shaking of the brain there. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, while well, uh, Bobby's uh, going to sit down and take some Tylenol, uh, we stand strong as your front line to the Avengers titles published by Marvel Comics. We defend you from the bad books and avenge the books you may have missed. Yeah, I, I think I'm good enough 
I'm back. I'm good enough to do my part here. Issues will be rated from a, a one to a sixteen, a one to five. One being very, very bad, and five being very, very good. There's going to be spoilers, so consider yourself warned. <laughs> okay, see if you remember this person, woman, camera, TV. <laughs> can you can can you know do you know that one? <laughs> Wait, person, woman, camera, TV. Good. Cool. <laughs> oh, is that like a. You don't have dementia. Like... All right. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> For a second, I was like, is this a, is this a bit? What's he talking about? You were sort of. Uh, there was the whole thing with, with. There was the whole thing with Trump, like taking the yeah. dementia test and oh, him, like, oh. bragging about passing the passing. dementia test. Yeah. <laughs> a special human. Uh, Anyways. Without further. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about the Avengers books of November 2023. Uh, Bobby's going to start us off. Yeah, so uh, jumping right in with uh, the flagship title of Avengers. That's uh, going to be issue seven, um, which is written by... Why can't I just be on the first page? Who's it written by, guys? Jen McKay. McKay? Mm-hmm. Jen McKay writing mm-hmm. art by Sia Villa, uh, colors by Frederico Blee, and colors by Corey Petit. Another cool, cool, cool. Stuart Eminen cover. Yeah. Um, so this was this is an interesting issue. So um, we uh, we, jo- we rejoined the group um, when last we saw them. Uh, There was a little bit of uh, knocking the Avengers around going on and T'Challa and um, somebody were were on the uh, invisible, what's it, the invisible city, the the special city, (laughs) Um, uh, the impossible city. And um, the Ashen Combine was busy pretty much um, powering through the Avengers down on Earth. So, yeah, um, basically, um, it looks really bad for our guys. And one by one, we see them make their last stand, (laughs) uh, going up against the Ashen Combine and, um, Vision's the first to die. Uh, Wanda's really upset. And so she kind of like goes goes to the back and tries to take an extra minute to mourn with vision while the rest of them just like take, take their shoot their shot. Um, and try to, uh, do some salvaging here. Um, but it's pretty grim and uh, essentially one by one, they all, uh, die. And as we finally get to Wanda, um, she, realizes that she can hear the narrator (laughs) um and so uh, what's going on here it the narrator is um nightmare um yeah nightmare who uh i forget like whose villain he is dr strange's maybe he's from yeah kind of yeah you could say that (laughs) and she's like it's it's a trick And, um, so he's like, you're right, it's a trick, but that doesn't mean you guys aren't getting your butts kicked. (laughs) And, uh, so the, um, yes, yes, they're, they're getting their butts kicked, but they're not dead. Uh, and basically the last thing we see is this new, um, some new challengers step up, uh, the Twilight Court, and they're here to... And Kang. Yeah, and we last we last saw them during one of the timeless one shots. Oh, they're not brand new. Nope, they're the ones that kicked Kang's ass, which is when he arrived in issue one of Avengers, looking for help. Yeah, the, this is this is the group that I think Kang was warning uh, Captain Marvel right. about. Right. So we get a, you know, a little bit of a full circle. I actually <clears throat> wanted to go back and check because I could have. I, I, I actually think that at the end of issue six, 
they weren't losing all that bad, right? They had they no, were they had they yeah, had they won. won. They right, won everything the day. was done. Like so this, this fight is completely different from the Ashen Combine. Um, no, so th- I think this issue is kind of amazing because it's like a, you know, there's no like there's no crossover. We, we're supposed we're supposed to feel like when we last saw our team, like they were getting their butts kicked, but they weren't. They were <laughs> they were like in a winning position and they basically fell into this illusion. So the, the way that it's written is it takes the reader into the illusion as well. Right. What, what I find really odd too, is like, I definitely thought this was a different reality because you've got Captain Marvel back in her Miss Marvel uniform. Yeah. You got Thor in his nineties costume. You've got an old, older Iron Man look as well. <laughs> yeah. And the Falcon I think, cap. I think vision is, is like the white vision. Yep. It was the white vision as well. The emotionless version. I picked up a, some of those details, but not as many as you guys. That was, I mean, yeah, clearly at first I was like, did I misremember? And, you know, when the, when they did the reveal at the end, I have to say, I was like, wow, that, that's dope. Because I w- what I was thinking to myself was the whole last issue um, was kind of like, if they were in the same position as this, it's the exact same, except now that they sort of like died and we're getting their butts kicked, but that wasn't it at all. Instead, like I, I like it. I like the, the concept a lot. It's, it's sort of it, like it, they got me, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they got me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the last issue, they won the day and yeah, you know, so it's like <clears throat> you start this issue. I'm like, all right, here's the new arc, and then you start. They start the new arc where like everybody dies, and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and but for me, I was like, I misremembered what we, because I I thought it, that's what we talked about and and read as well, but I was, I like f- literally fell into the illusion. I was like, I must be misremembering because I guess they were dying last issue. <laughs> Um, yeah. and that's storytelling right there, uh, which this book desperately needed a dose of. So I'm, I'm pretty, um, I mean, you know, since they tricked me, I have to sort of give them at least a little bit of credit. <laughs> so I, I had to go back and do a little bit of research with a few things. So I was wrong before about the uncanny. I may have been wrong about the, un- no, actually, no, take that back. So you want to try that again from the top? Yeah, let let me get into the intro before I get to the to the the meat of what I'm talking about. So this book was interesting because the very beginning, they start talking about the end of the cosmos, the end of the universe. The the, what did they say? The child, the howling children of the anti all have been released to clear away the weeping remains of the eighth cosmos. They're basically saying the entire universe had been destroyed, not just that. Well, this is the end of it. Yeah, it's coming to its end. Now, if you may not remember, but way back at the end of Secret Wars, when Reed Richards rebuilt everything, that was the beginning of the Eighth Cosmos. Did you do the research? Because when you jump into the Ultimates, which was the whole... Black Panther, Black Adam, Miss America, that whole Kenneth Brockerford. Not Black drawing. Adam, Marvel. <laughs> oh, Black, um, Black Marvel, sorry, yeah. Um, when you jump Blue. into that book, they research their whole thing is about <laughs> yes. Blue Marvel. There Blue you Marvel. go, sorry. Um, who's a black dude? Who's a black yeah, guy? <laughs> sorry, go on. You're, you're, I'm, I'm with you, go on. They get into the whole creation of the eighth cosmos and some of the stuff with the previous cosmos which goes into which we'll get into a little bit later on when we get into the beyonders and the black swans and all these other things but we covered ultimates number one in episode 102 wow of emp so almost 100 episodes back where we first I, covered that oh that's that's kind of bizarrely uh that, related right i mean <laughs> who's to say like what our what our schedule was like but still it, that's almost like a hundred ep- episodes to the you know to the if we, digit. 
if we were monthly, you probably would have <laughs> gone closer. But yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Which... Uh, mm-hmm. I was just gonna say, like that's the type of stuff that um, Marvel comics have always like. I get a hard on for it when like they really did set it up <laughs> mad long ago, and it's not just a writer comes in and retcon some stuff to tell their story. That uh, that gives me off. chills. Yeah, I love that so, shit. I just love that they touched on the eighth cosmos here, and it's gonna, I think, play into some things later on that we'll talk about. But um, wait, another thing, eighth cosmos. <laughs> the next issue, guys, is. The dawn of the ninth issue number eight. Dun dun. Uh, coincidence or dun dun dun. <laughs> which which is also uh, issue seven hundred and seventy four. By the time um, next up, the next issue, so creeping up on seven seventy five of Avengers. But um, I just thought that was kind of interesting that they put that point out here in this. Yeah, this that's, issue. That's, that's a good pull. I wouldn't have got that. <laughs> Did you did it really like strike you that you did you have a recollection like I feel like they talked about this back then or yes did... I, I definitely had a recollection because even with the ultimates you had Black Panther you also had the White Tiger which here I don't know why he's connected to that Tiger God um, who he isn't supposed to be because you know it's supposed to be boss oh, yeah. so I don't know what's going on with this dream world or I thought it was an alternate reality at first I. I I don't know. It's just some things that are off. So we'll have to see how that stuff plays out. No, but I'm saying you remembered from the end of Secret Wars that they mentioned the eighth cosmos. Yes, I remember the creation of the eighth cosmos, but we will get to that, especially when we talk about God's number two. So oh. there's, maybe there's a connection. Maybe I have a question because damn, Corwin, that's a poll right there. I got to give the, you credit. The, yeah, there's connections. So <laughs> all right. All right. Um. Corwin is the the comic buying map maker. <laughs> Corwin should be wearing glasses in pictures because it would make people understand that he's the smart one. Uh, um, I stopped wearing glasses in 2020. I got LASIK, so uh, that wasn't meant to be a dig. I didn't. I didn't even know that. No, no. So. <laughs> I know intelligence is a sign of you know research intelligence kind of especially professor. Um, anything else to add for this before we move uh, on? extremely short issue <laughs> i couldn't believe when i got to the end of it but, yeah yeah um sure it was all a dream <laughs> yeah i i i'm gonna go ahead like for me uh like i said the the redemption uh was strong with this one i'll give them uh you know uh four four cosmoses um back you know, swinging by, uh, with a bullet, right? Rising back from, I think I gave him a two last last month. So this, uh, I mean, obviously the, the enjoyable part is literally the, the reveal, but it was a great setup. So I dug it. And I actually thought that the art seemed to step up a little bit. The inks still, or rather the colors still have like some, uh, I don't know. They're a little drab, I guess, is the, is the only word I can think of right now. But I mm-hmm. feel like the art is developing. It's not perfect yet, but it sees, I see signs of, uh, of improvement. Um, this is going to get a three waking nightmares from me. Um, wasn't bad. The art is still hurting the book more than helping. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna Mark. give, I'm gonna give this, uh, three and a half, uh, Nightmare on Avenger Street. <laughs> I'm gonna give it an average of three and a half. Like, there you have it. It was, it was cool. I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of roll my eyes when it's like, it was a dream kind of issues, but. You know what? I need to catch up on Black Panther. I know he's been um, banished from Wakanda. Mm-hmm. I don't know if his current power set has anything to do with the Tiger God instead of Boss, but um, damn, I got a lot of reading. I, I haven't ca- caught up with Black Panther in a long time. I haven't read it in a while. Yeah, Maybe there is more of a connection than we think. 
There is a the, cool rock kaiju looking thing. <laughs> That's always a benefit. Be it, I would say that I typically I I agree with you that the it was all a dream sort of like Deus Ex Machina is is kind of lame, but that's a little bit different from what happened here, I feel like, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. But still, it, it, it on some level, you know, they invested 20 pages of comic book that, you know, didn't happen, right? Like, yeah. so, yeah. That, I, I would probably put it at a four uh, if it weren't for that. So. <laughs> Fair enough. We've got to defend them against the books they may have not known were bad. <laughs> you know, I um just you know stroll down memory lane looking at these past episodes. There were a time that we literally had six to seven Avengers books a month. Wow. Dude, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, it's different now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeez, just looking back, it's like wow, it was it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Was All right. <clears throat> Speaking about yeah. multiple books, we yeah, have good. See? It's you. Avengers Inc. number three, written by Al Ewing with art by Leonard Kirk, inked by Leonard Kirk and Gallardino Prabo. Um, colors by Alex Sinclair. I don't know why the color artist just completely, I lost it completely, <laughs> but Alex Sinclair on the colors and VC P- Corey's Petit on letters with a Cover also by Daniel Acuna. Mm. Mm. All right. So this issue starts out in the Great Hall of Valhalla, where an old bearded man tells Scourge that it's time. Uh, Scourge decides he's going to go cut the meat of the great boar Samir Ceremonar. Minera. Something like that. Ceremonar? There you go. So he gets up and he Mm. goes to the pit the pit the giant pit where they're roasting this boar and um suddenly his own axe flies out of his hand and kills him stabs him in the chest so like... of course um valkyrie aka um uh oh crap i forgot foster. her name jane um, foster jane I'm looking at Janet, and I want to say Janet, but yes, Jane Foster, a.k.a. Valkyrie, has come to Janet for help because, of course, Thor is away in his own series right now. Finding your frost giants. Yep. But Valkyrie also sees, like, you know, your future and stuff and can see, well, not your future, but your impending death. And for some reason, over Victor Shade, she sees something different, which in my eyes looks more like an Ultron. It's like an orb with eyes. Yeah. But the eyes look like Ultron, so Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a hinting at something. But anyway, she takes the two to Valhalla to try to, you know, do their their monthly mystery thing. I was going to say Monk because I noticed that uh, Monk is back. I don't know if you guys realized. (laughs) Really? TV show. Yeah. I think it's I don't know if it's a movie or one shot, but Monk is back. Anyway, um, she brings them to Valhalla to solve this mystery of how uh, Executioner was killed while they're there. Vic has a vision of something and you see actually Pim saying that, uh, you know, he won't remember this and neither will I, I won't be allowed to, you're my last hope son. So obviously there's somebody above Pim, um, who is manipulating things, but shade is having these flashes of memory. Um, we do come to see that the, uh, the Reaper is here, Grim Reaper, um, Wonder Man's brother um, is here, which is ironic because he he died thinking himself a hero. So I guess that's why he's there. But he also finds this place to be a punishment. Um, He's definitely not happy to be in Valhalla. So um, perfect prison, as they state, which is kind of odd. But anyway, he's able to hurt Vic Shade, even though he tried to um, change his density to that of a diamond. We come to find out that, of course, in this realm of the gods, you know, normal mortals are just going to be vulnerable. So um, they end up taking care of him. And then Janet kind of interviews everybody to try to figure out what happened. And then she says she needs to talk to Odin. So upon inter- quote unquote interviewing Odin, um, he says, basically, 
you can't handle the truth. But um, eventually confesses that it's a plot between him and Executioner because Odin is able to send people out of Valhalla if he's the one who killed them since he created Valhalla and everything there. So um, they put on a front because he didn't want the regular other characters to know, other people there to know that there is actually a way out of Valhalla. But Scourge realizes that Thor is in need of his assistance, so Odin assisted him in escaping to go do that. Which, when you look back on it, it's kind of funny because Executioner is a terrible actor. He he's some C list acting when he when you go back and look at him um, talking about his you know his axe losing control of his axe mm-hmm. or whatever. So um, the issue does end with the oh here we go with these people wow. the <laughs> Death Throws, which are a group of um, juggling Beals. bad guys. Um, and the oddball has been killed. The bald theme villain, uh, supposedly killed by Scourge. So they need to investigate what happened. And actually, oh, they need to find Janet and uh, Victor Shade because Victor Shade was op- was once one of their members. All right. I went a little long with that, but no, that was very well uh, in depth. It's excellent. <laughs> Done good. <laughs> yeah. This was this was a book. <laughs> Better than the last issue, I think. I guess. They, uh, they, my goodwill towards this book was sacrificed on the altar of issue two's terrible. Just, I felt insulted by the issue too so damn i think i think this this book doesn't work as a one and done like right, like because like trying the to whole the whole point of like a who done it yeah you... or like a who done it or like a detective show or like i, I feel like one Where's issue isn't enough <laughs> Right, because like you need to put clues to kind of solve the the problem, right? In order, like, to solve the case, you know, mm-hmm. and like without any any other, like, we're we're just basically told the solution without any clues of Odin and any of that other stuff. We just happen just to know that it's Odin. Right, so there's no clues or anything. There's no flashbacks. Oh. There's no. Yeah, I forgot about that. The old man at the beginning was supposedly old, was Odin. Right, but like, th- but there's nothing. There's nothing throughout the issue that clues you into that, and that's that's how, uh, you know, that's how a monster today like procedural works, right? <laughs> you know, and and I think that this is where it falls short, like where <laughs> like you're just. Okay, yeah. like it's like okay, so it was Odin the whole time. All right, you know, like, dude, and... you're a hundred percent ab. Like, like, that's exactly right. You know, like the the mechanics <laughs> of the writing in this book, uh, like make it so like they like preempt the possibility of <laughs> the supposed style working, like. Like you said, you can't have a detective mystery if there's no mystery to solve. Like, that's the bottom line. You have to at least be sort of, uh, yeah, given some breadcrumbs. And if, and if, you know, if you're just not like a good writer in that way, there's literally like, there's little like tropes that you can read about to figure out how to do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but and not, like Al uh, Ewing isn't a bad yeah. writer. No, yeah. but this, it's, it's mechanically incorrect is basically you're right. It does. It's not, I don't know. It's very bizarre. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't work as a one issue. Like it needs to at least be like, I don't know, at least two, maybe to four. I wouldn't give it that many issues, but like, I don't know. Like it, like I feel like more clues, like it feels like it's rushed, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I had this game for 
my PC computer back in the day. I'm talking about like 1989. It was a Spider-Man game. It might have been called like Spider-Man versus the Sinister Six, but not the SNES. This was like real bad. It was a side scroller, but I'm talking my computer was maybe a 386 or something like not even Pentium. And Oddball was one of the villains I just remember very specifically. <laughs> it was the only time I've ever seen Oddball was in that game. And he was really annoying. The juggling um, thing was a problem. Spider-Man couldn't jump over all them balls. So, anyways. <laughs> oh, boy. This, uh, this book sucks. I'm not a fan. Don't- yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. This was better than last, and the art I like still. It's serviceable art. It's not terrible, but... Yeah. Yeah. Throw, throw your grade out then, Bobby. Oh, God. Uh, I, I, this, I, I, um, I refrain. What's it called? I, I decline. Abstain, yeah. My mother taught me that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't Dude, say anything. You, you you can't give it a zero. At least the art alone should give you something more yeah. than a zero. We'll give uh, we'll give one uh, unmysterious mystery Oof. for the art. Okay, okay. Um, we'll give it uh, two and a half. Bad acting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'll give this. Uh, I'll give this two, uh, two axes to the chest. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to, I think, probably the best book of the batch. All right. Um, yeah, moving on to uh, to gods number two. Jonathan um, Hickman. Yep. Heck. Let's see, uh, written by Jonathan Hickman, art by Valerio Schiti, uh, colors by Marte Gracia, uh, let's see, no letters? Nah, they yeah. not on the page. No letter, okay. You lost it, Hi, yep. Travis Lanham, there it is. Oh, there it is. See, it happened to you too, something's going on with letters, yeah. letterers <laughs> this, this episode. Um, so yeah, um. Here we we continue from the from the big uh, Babylon event from issue one. Um, we have the um, the natural the natural order of things uh, trying to to uh, increase their ranks. Apparently, um, out of the one hundred members, uh, fifty of them died from that Babylon event. And uh, and there's only three prime members remaining, and so uh, Iko uh, goes off uh, to recruit some more people. Um, meanwhile, we uh, are at the Sanctum Sanctorum, Sanctorum, and uh, where uh, where all the all the magic users. Uh, Get Cubis Core to take them, uh, to take them back to his home, and mm-hmm. and he shows them this box that he's in. What's in the box? Yeah, what's in the Skin box? box. Um, and and like in a in a warehouse in Athens, Georgia. Uh, so meanwhile, uh, Iko, we are introduced to someone that I thought was Kitty Pride <laughs> for a little bit, like from the cover, uh, like in her uh, pirate gear, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but it's not her. Uh, this is uh, this is Mia. So we're introduced to this Mia character, and um, yeah, like. There, there's just like weird things happening where she's, uh, she's, uh, I guess she's getting exposed or like learning about magic. And Aiko's, uh, sort of re- recruiting her or basically like telling her that, um, like you're gonna learn all this magic and we're just gonna watch you as an experiment. But also, uh, here's the library of worlds. <laughs> 
and just kind of blows your mind with uh, you're just blown away with all this uh sci-fi stuff that's happening in this library and in the end she she i guess she agrees agrees to do it and that's the end of the issue and i know there's a whole lot that i that that corwin's gonna get into uh detail wise but that's what happens in this book so do you guys think that Aiko's trying to recruit her to the powers that be, even though she definitely leans more towards it's another uh, episode of Aiko's mind blowers. Yeah. Do you do you think she's trying to recruit her from the other side and kind of steer away from magic, even though she's kind of says she just wants to let her be? It it definitely uh reeks of like cheating at some greater you know what I mean? Like she she is somehow like rigging uh, a game that is being played on some like higher level of existence. I feel like. And what I think, what 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 I first thought is that okay, maybe they're trying to pull a Dimitri, where even though he's an envoy for the natural order of things, he's been linked to Win, who's the avatar to the powers that be. So I'm thinking that maybe this is going to be something that's going the other way, where. You know, a p- powers that be characters kind of underneath the natural order of things character. Was one of my first thoughts. Could be. Maybe. So here's some cool stuff. So the Centum, of course, are 100. They're always number 100. And that yeah, makes we sense. lost 50 of them. Yeah. Centum, we lost 100. 50. <laughs> we sense. lost 50 of them. Between 1 to 100, there's 25 prime numbers, which is numbers that's only divisible by one and itself. Here, we realize that three remain. Two, which is the lowest, I guess you can say, prime number, which is um the black dude. Ninety-seven, which is Aiko, however you pronounce your name. Is it Aiko? Aiko? A... Aiko? Yeah. Aiko. Yeah. She's the highest. Nineteen is kind of just there. So they're the three primes that are left. When Aiko gives... Um... Two is not a prime number, though. Yes, the divisible by itself and one. No. Mm. What? Google it. I'm pretty certain two is a prime number. Look it up just in okay. case. <clears throat> but um no, when two is a prime number. Okay. What when, when Echo gives uh what's the girl's name? What's the new girl's Mia. name? Mia. 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 Okay. Mia when she gives when she gives me the li- the card with the library number for a book, the- it's eight o eight point six one six. Right, I do remember that. The book that she finds is the Lost Years of Yabat Uman Toru, based uh, the failed history of the Black Swan, the I book did. of the Black Priest. I did find that. that. I did. I mean, I caught it, but I didn't know. So yeah. you know, Black Swan is the the literal character who was with the who's now with the Black Order, who used I to. She, and she lived in the in the library, right? The library was the Black Swan's main base. Mm-hmm. If you add those numbers up, that on that library, I forgot the library code. Eight oh eight six one six. It gives you twenty nine, which is a prime number. <clears throat> So I don't know if that's a coincidence if she's trying to recruit her and her number may be 29 if Mia does jump ship. But I thought that was interesting. I don't know. Well, 616 could also mean like yeah, the this, universe. Yeah, this and, Marvel universe. And and we'll we'll I'll uh, I'll see your your 616 universe and raise you the 8th cosmos 808. Right? Aren't we in the 8th cosmos? And if it's the lost years of what's the the first part of the name? The eighth cosmos? Oh, the mean? lost years of who and the title of the book. The, the lost book. years of the Yabat Omen Tura? Yabat yeah, what, what can you spell it? Oh, got you. Uh, let me go back to the Yabat page. is Y A B B A T. And the other name it oh Uman yeah. Toru. Okay. 
but it's it's the book of the black priests. So yeah. this took this ticks me back. I had to go all the way back to Secret Wars and Hickman's run on um Avengers and New Avengers because the black priests were the ones who destroyed um her world which made her flee and end up joining the black swan so she has a thing against the black priests um you mean the black come... swan joining the black order right correct yeah. well joining the uh, what was the name of that group thanos's group that was doing killing worlds for the incursions as well oh the cabal the cabal yeah there we go so we know she doesn't like the black police, which are kind of, I want to say they're magic based. I don't really quite remember all the details with it, but I know Doctor Strange did join them right near the end of the series oh, when yeah. he tried to, when he tried to stop um, Robin Al, the Great Destroyer. Mm -hmm. All right. Looking at all this now, the Beyonders were the Ivy, are also called the Ivy Kings, and. They were created by the Celestials to maintain the multiverse from outside the multiverse. <clears throat> okay. We find out during the countdown to Secret Wars that they created Molecule Man, who was supposed to be basically a fail-safe trigger to destroy universes right. when they when they, they can set him off to destroy universes. He was like Desmond and Lost. So Aban Rall, Ab Robin Alal. The Great Destroyer, we find out, is Doom, who ends up taking Molecule Man and going universe to universe, killing the different Molecule Man men, so the Beyonders can't use them as a trigger. Right. They went back in time to do this, which is what started the incursions. Because of this, started the incursions. Doom, as Rabban Alal, founded the Black Swans. Founded? Yes. They're his... They're, they were... Basically, his religion. Um, the, he founded the religion that they follow. <laughs> okay. But of course, you know that Doom and Molecule Man set out to stop the Beyonders from destroying everything, which is when he used, instead of killing all the Molecule Men, he used them to destroy the Beyonders, take their power, try to save the universe, and create a battle world, which is where we get Secret Wars. Mm -hmm. Which is where, when... Reed tricked Doom into saying that maybe Reed would have done a better job, which is when Molecule Man gave the powers to Reed, which is when Reed created the eighth cosmos. Right. All right. So now, doing oh, my wait, pause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you telling me then that Doom essentially? took Molecule, during Secret Wars, took Molecule Man to undo his own work? Well, as always, Doom is his worst enemy, and during the fight with Reed Richards, he had made some comment, basically, that he believes Richard probably would have done a better job, or something like that, which is when Molecule Man was like, okay, and then gave Reed the power. <clears throat> okay. So, now that I'm looking at all this stuff again, it kind of hit me. You remember Noel, the King in Black? The, um, the King in Black from the... From like the, the Venom? Venom. Yeah, the yeah, Venom, Venom symbiote. Okay. He is supposed to be the opposite of the Beyonders. He is supposed to be the Onyx King who works within the multiverse, keeping things... I don't want to say, well, maintaining the multiverse that was kind of supposed to be his job before he went off script and decided he wanted to destroy everything. Stop chaos. Pretty much. He, he He's their opposite. So he was made to actually keep balance, help maintain the universe before he decided he wanted to kill everything. So he was created during the seventh cosmos. So like Galactus, he's a survivor from the previous, well, you, iteration. I think Galactus, Galactus may have been the sixth because he was before the last one, which was destroyed. So Galactus may have been from the sixth, but yes, he was a survivor from a previous cosmos, which now Eddie Brock is a new king in black. So if you think about that, they could be building something big here since Eddie's still going through his drama with being the king in black. 
we're talking about the different cosmoses now. We're talking about black swans now. We're, we're kind of getting back into it, and it's kind of interesting and curious to see where they're going to lead, since this is still all Hickman's, well, except, except for the King in Black, it was kind of Hickman stuff. If, if, uh, if this as his Black Swan song is a, a way, an attempt to tie all of his previous, you know, uh, like hundred issue arcs <laughs> into one um, sweeping epic. I'll probably vote for him for president. It's just cool putting the pieces together where they could be heading and, and seeing what they're doing. Um, very curious. Yeah, I do love the a pretty serious, um, pretty serious map. Like, there, there's some very strong through lines. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and, like, yeah, seeing the word Black Swan made me think of Black Swan from the the Black Order. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, wait, I was like, and then, like, all of, like, she was all white. Like, and mm-hmm. then, so I was thinking that these uh, a natural order of things, people were also Black Swans, or, or just, just through, like, coloration because they were all white yeah there there could be a link because and because like of the, the white black, hair and all that stuff yeah and because of the black priests who i think lean more towards magic based black swan hated magic and hated everything to do with that so yes there could be a link there yeah i also noticed uh, that mia mia is wearing a red jacket and when uh is the magic user Wears a red jacket. Wears a red jacket. So there, there's a, there's some there's some color coordination going on here, of the mm-hmm. like a, like she's a powers that be. Um, yes. When I first was reading her name for a second, I thought that Mia's Mia's name was a palindrome. It's Mia de Maria. It's not a palindrome at all, but it's like uh, close. It's it's got it's got like iterative qualities to it <laughs> which which is another thing dimitri now that you mentioned that dimitri oh, what is his last name they say his last name here hold on and i thought it was weird I th- dimitri krakovoff right well that looked like to my thought there was is what what relation does that guy have to krakoa exactly and so it's one letter off are we looking at then sort of some some sort of like archetype archetypes are these people like representative of or or are they avatars i guess is the word hickman uses right that maybe the school that this girl is studying at isn't a school in the traditional sense that we think as much as it is <laughs> you know some sub-dimensional well it, it's columbia right? i don't know I know, I know that's what it says, but like, I just wonder who all these people are. Right. Yes. Like, um, they make a real, I mean, they, they, they go out of, the, he goes out of his way to, uh, highlight that, like, her friends know and, um, uh, the, the, the priest, the wizard, the, that's in charge. That's that's teaching her. What's her name? Hey, Iko. <laughs> Iko. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she notices that um, Mia studies too hard, right? Like she studies to to the point of exhaustion. And her friends say the same thing. Like, oh yeah, we know you're not coming. You're gonna study. So, like, I, I just. I feel like uh, I've learned my lesson that if you're reading a Jonathan Hickman comic and you feel like something is being dangled in front of you, it is right. Like we, it, we, we ignore every single detail here at our own peril. <laughs> so um, I, th- I think what like the, the important stuff to try and figure out from this issue is, 
uh, what 808.616 means. I mean, the lost years of Yabit Amanturo. Yabit Amanturo is Black Swan's name, real name, yeah. She uh, is a Black Swan, but yes. But she's also the last Black Swan. So, well, before the universe was recreated, yes, I don't know what's going on in the eighth iteration. I don't think we've seen any other ones, but we've barely seen her anyway, so. Um, true, I guess that's possible. But I mean. Actually, there's more. If at the end of the issue, when you read for the next issue, it does say the black swans are in the bar. Yeah. There are black swans in the bar. Yeah. Who's, Uh, who's, um, who's Cassandra? Um, that's the Greek myth. The one who prophecies and nobody ever believes when she tells them the prophecy oh okay it's not dr strange's girlfriend <laughs> no that's claire his wife oh yeah. my cassandra bad. is cursed with knowing the future but no one believes her uh there are black swans in the bar oblivion wants to drink alone but kids these days don't respect authority figures most of the ingredients are illegal outside of hell's kitchen <laughs> one thing uh, that I did like is this book. Echo can't see it. It's invisible to her. She's saying only Mia can see it, or I guess maybe magically inclined. And of course, when she grabs the book is when it opens up to the Library of Worlds. Right. So that's interesting. <clears throat> um, hmm. uh, I googled uh, Earth 808. Mm-hmm. Um, and it brings up a uh, what if comic of Doctor Doom had become a hero. Huh. Um, that's that's. Uh, I mean, that's too much of a coincidence. Yeah. So uh, uh, he... let's see. It says Earth 808 would diverge from uh, Earth 616 during the years that Victor Von Doom attended State College. In this reality, uh, when his classmate Reed Richards found incorrect calculations with Doom's device to contact uh, contact the afterlife, uh, Doom reacted to the news differently. Unlike the Earth-616, Doom listened to Reed Richards' warnings, and the two would work together and make unnecessary corrections. From 1980. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's Earth eight oh eight, where where Doom is a hero, mm-hmm. and didn't uh-huh. and actually. Now that that we think what I think about it, think back, isn't that how the um, the remaking of the universe left Doom? Like when when Reed remade everything, wasn't Doom like supposed like supposed to leave as? A good guy in some sense, then? I don't recall. No, well, I don't recall. I guess he didn't have the imagination or the forethought to actually create everything. Because once Reed set things in motion, the Fantastic Four, or at least Reed, Invisible Woman, and their kids left to go continue creating multiple realities with uh, Franklin's power. So I don't know. And, and Doom had a white costume. Yes, he did. Time to, uh, <clears throat> again, the color coordination. <laughs> huh. huh, where would Doom fall? He is, a, he is a student of both magic and science, so he would fall in between? Yeah. Well, like, the, the natural order of things, there, it's, it's not necessarily science, right? It's, like, the study of magic in, a, like, a scientific way. Right, like not not necessarily science or like tech. It's I don't know. At least that's what it, what it what I gathered from this uh, from this issue, at least from what Ico was explaining. Well, the intro wrong. says the powers that be in the natural order of things are two forces that shape all of existence. Their mortal avatars and apprentices roam the earth, working together in the ancient truths in an uneasy alliance of science and magic. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> I I googled what does eight hundred eight point six one six mean, and I got a a Reddit like reviewer <clears throat> um, who just writes like three sentences about each comic that mm-hmm. and is the three of this of his gods to a review are first appearance of me the magic girl strange continues to expose cubist core Ico begins recruiting for the centum what does 808616 mean <laughs> so he thought it was important too yeah, it's it's interesting to really sit there and try to figure it out. I just added them together, which gave me 29, which is a prime number. So I thought maybe that may have something to do with it, but mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, uh, someone just wants to make some, some, some sweet beats in the six months. <laughs> <laughs> I was, um, I was slightly like like confused for like my worlds collided there for a second. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just like I've been trying to figure out a way of making an eight oh eight joke <laughs> this whole time. I, I suffered an incursion. <laughs> yeah. Trying to boom like an eight oh eight. Yeah. Nothing sounds quite like. <clears throat> uh so this book is good. Oh yeah. And um, this issue issue was kind of meh to me, but like it's a little bit talking more with you guys fun. makes it good. But reading yeah. it itself is just like meh. Like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, but that said, the first time I watched Tenet, I wasn't sure if I liked it, and then the tenth time that I watched Tenet, you know, by that point I was ready to declare. Christopher Nolan, like a supernatural being, like uh, I'm only on my third watch of that. Uh, that was a that was a slight exaggeration, but I I did watch it like the the week that I first watched. I watched it like three or four times because I kept I just knew I was gonna put more and more stuff together and catch more and more things and absolutely we'll, we'll, that's a we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll swap notes <laughs> off here <laughs> whole other thing um so yeah I, but you know the the points are well made this issue is a little bit of a slog um it's the it's the you know drilling down as as corwin mentioned that, that really kind of gives it that chef's kiss so i guess i'll call it um We'll go ahead and give it uh, three, uh, three black swans. I like black swans; they're kind of kind of hot. Make me think of Natalie Portman. Took mine. All right. Um, I always, do I'm that. always do that uh, when I. I just. I'm going. That must just really burn you up, Corey. <laughs> oh, mm, I forgot about. I this reminded one. of something. You did remind me of I something. Echo uh, tells Mia that. You spoke words of power, and the universe bent. I did. I did. I do remember that line because it it did stand out. Who else does the universe bend for? Listen to. Oh, manifold. You got it. You got it. So she could be related so, to manifold in some way. I mean, maybe manifold's power is somehow related to the the. I always get the the powers that be, yeah powers that mm-hmm. be. Um, maybe he's related to that somehow because she does this almost the same thing I thought was really interesting. But um going to give and I'm curious about her friends. There's something yep something up with the friends. I don't know what it is. It's a little off, but I don't know if they're supposed to mean something or if there's more than what we know of with the friends, but I'll be interested to see if they pop back up. Um going to give it Or invisible books. Yeah, I'll give this a uh, three and a half. Um, yeah, three and a half. Uh, white character. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, is this about is this about white characters podcasting again? Via yes, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> white characters uh, being God. <laughs> hey, they can't help it. They're just born that way. Uh, well, that makes for some good bookery. Yeah. Yes, it does. I um, I just threw the the Jeff, the it's Jeff, the Jeff verse number one, just because I love oh, I love so Jeff Talan Shark. And uh, who does? Yeah, who doesn't love some Jeff. Yeah, and, and these were like these in uh in, in like Infinity Comic issues, and they're it they're fun to just uh they're just delightful little yeah, and they're mostly wordless too. Yeah. You can just kind of scroll through it's them, like yeah, and uh, and they're just delightful. <laughs> so, <laughs> agreed. Uh, oh, one thing I don't think we pointed out: the box that Cupid's core goes into was created by or belongs to the In Betweener. In Betweener, the Beyonder, cosmic entities. Mm-hmm. The... Um, actually, hold on. There is other books that came out. Um, White Widow number one mm-hmm. was a decent first issue. Um, about the sister, yep, Yelena mm-hmm. doing her thing. Uh, written by Sarah Gailey and Alessandro Miracolo on art, Matt Miller on colors, Travis Lanham on letters. Um, it's a fun issue. The art style is. He the artist is still a new artist and you can tell, but he's kind of got that. Um, I see a little bit of Olivia Olivia Coipel, a little bit of uh, Leonard Kirk in his styles. It's still very raw, and he's coming along. And you can, I think, the writer is new. It's not perfect, but it's it's still interesting enough. So if you really sort of want to check that out, that could be a fun issue to check out. Um, she's off on her own doing her little thing, trying to build a life. You know, it's almost kind of like Hawk the Hawkeye series, where they're they're world building around her. She has an apartment. She, she has her weird neighbors, and you get introductions to all of them and her lifestyle. So it's something to keep an eye on. I know she's going to be playing a part in uh, Bucky's, aka the Revolution's Thunderbolts as well. So. Um, she has like a mini series. Yeah, I just uh, I actually just finished the the Captain America like Sentinel of Liberty and the Symbol of Truth like that that series with um uh Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing and uh yeah that was Cold War. yeah that was really good that was a yeah, really good Cold series. Hmm. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> whenever we have extra time, uh, we should uh, we should go through that series. It's really good. Uh, no one, no caps, not so bad either. I haven't the Tr- read the Tri- stuff. Yep, I haven't read the latest issue. I've read the first two, but we can probably wait till the first arc is done and then cover it and then see if we want to pick it up. There you go. Lord knows, um, <laughs> ink is going away to issue five. Yeah. <laughs> Or yeah, I yeah. guess you know, I guess we could pick up uh Captain America. Uh we can do Sentinel Sentinel Liberty and all that. I'm down. Cool. Right. Uh I wanted to say via too that um even though I haven't gotten through them yet, I appreciate you uh putting me putting me on and you know, uh gifting me of the expanse oh, continue yeah. books. That's pretty dope. Yeah, I need to see if there's more issues already out. But <clears throat> something else people should look for if they're into the experience. Have you started reading it? Is it Are you digging I read it? The issue. I read the first issue. Yeah, yeah, I am. Cool. I read the first issue, but I, I haven't read any of the other ones yet. Sweet. It's good. I mean, you know, it was a great show. It it'll, it'll be a it'll be a you know they got shoes to fill i guess as is the word so we'll see but it's not bad so far all right all right boys. we're uh we're coming up on episode 200 next year yeah next next year next month that'll be this year yeah yep, so oh well, i sent books for this year 
the episode will be next month. <laughs> yeah, right. So I sent out word on Twitter, on Facebook, on the Discord. Um, not Discord. Um, yeah, the Discord mm-hmm. server. Duh. Twitch. Um, we are looking for questions, comments, feedback, anything that you guys want to, listeners want to say to us or have us read on air for episode 200 of EMP and also episode 125 of EMX that is coming out in January 2024. So two anniversary episodes. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll hit up uh, Tribe One to see if we can get them on for something at okay. least. Uh, also email uh, EMP at earthsmightiestpodcast.com if you want to do it that way. I turned back on Facebook. I had to for some something related to music so <laughs> okay and then also i'm on twitter at EMPcast. don't forget the hashtag the collective net where you can find a host of other pack podcasts about just about damn near anything uh bobby's at at bob bobby are you even on twitter did you kill your twitter account dead dead okay i figured i tried to link you in some stuff and nothing came up yeah. but at comedian viet for viet yep. Yeah, I, I'm on Instagram at Bobby Mobetta, and um, and I'm back, uh, yeah, on Facebook. If you, I was always on Messenger, anyways. But if you want to holler at me on Facebook, you can find me under Bobby Mobetta as well. So, yep. All right. And uh, like you said, uh, speaking of Tribe One, uh, special thanks to Tribe One for our theme song. Maybe we can get an updated one from Tribe. Uh, on the tune. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So check out his website, Tribe One dot com. And with that, we will see y'all next time in the future. Bye-bye. Now appearing in the building, up in every ear hole, from 80-year-olds to the children. You're here to hear about the heroes and the villains, and save yourself some dollars, yen, and euros from the zeros to the millions. This is a lot of class packed into one podcast. They probably ought to have laws passed, but it's too late to stop the onslaught. Raw blast of compacted, bombastic, five-alarm sass. They're talking AVX, way back to secret invasion. They're talking flying up high in the sky, down to the feet on the pavement. They're reading the pages of every single one of the summer events. So other than Venice, you want to be coming to them when you want the Avengers. They're up inside of your environment with flying iron fists, giant-sized goliaths, and the tiniest super scientists. Try denying it, but I... I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest. EMP, literally MP3, TNT, Young, New, Mighty, and Secretly. Try and I in it, but I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest. EMP, literally MP3, TNT, Young, New, Mighty, and Secretly. Try and I in it, but I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest. Find out more about Earth's Mightiest Podcast at www.earthsmightiestpodcast.com. Earth's Mightiest Podcast is not affiliated with Marvel Comics in any way. Plot synopses may not be accurate. No similarities between names, characters, persons, aliens, ghosts, dimensional entities, and or institutions in this podcast are intended with those of any living, disembodied, dead, or undead person or institution. Any such similarity which may exist in this or any other universe, dimension, or altered timeline is purely, though probably not a coincidence. Earth's Mightiest Podcast is not responsible for any injuries, death, banishment to other dimensions, bodily or mental transformation due to sorcery, unplanned ingestion, or cybernetic implants, or babies conceived while listening to this podcast. We do not have anything worth suing us over. Thank you.